This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Mr. Barrett for six minutes, please. Clara Visser, the government contractor, recently charged for committing $250,000 in fraud um, under your watch. Um, can you tell us what the name of her company is and for which projects um, she worked? Thank you very much for the question. I do not have that information at my disposal in terms of what the name of the company is or what contracts were used. So you you don't know? No, no, no one, none of, none of the, uh, uh, none of the witnesses here today um, know the name of her company or the projects that she worked on? No, she secured various contracts through various prime contractors with various federal government departments and agencies. But the details of those contracts are not information that I have with me today. Is that information that you'll undertake to provide to the committee in writing? On peut certainement regarder, oui, dans nos dossiers et voir qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait vous fournir. Yes, we can look into our files and see what can be provided in this regard. Okay, so to be to be very clear, the name of the prime contractors, the name of her company, and the name of the projects that she worked on is the information that we're looking for. And of course, your department uh, will have those those records. So you said that you'll see what you're able to provide. Uh, of course, PSPC is able to provide the name of prime subcontractors in the contract that they work on, correct? Yes, we will provide that information. Yeah, it's. I, I must say, it's disappointing that um, you've you've come to the government operations committee today, um, not equipped with information that's, of course, in the public interest, and of course, would be questions uh, that that we would ask. Um, it it doesn't speak to transparency. We've we've found ourselves, um, you know, in this place uh, only by virtue of uh, of answers being demanded by by conservatives um, at committee. So. Um, are you able to tell us how many more cases of fraud, aside from Ms. Visser, have been reported to the RCMP, the number of cases? Thank you for the question. As announced by our minister in March, three cases of fraudulent overbilling were referred to the RCMP. So that includes Ms. Visser? Thank you very much for the question. That does not include Ms. Visser. That took place in fiscal year 2022-23, so that was the first case of fraudulent overbilling that we referred to the RCMP. But in 2023-24, we referred three further cases to the RCMP, and those are the three cases that were announced by the minister in March. And uh, in addition to Ms. Visser, um, is there a number greater than zero of cases that were referred to the RCMP before the spring? Yes or no, please. I'm sorry, I will have to ask you to repeat the question. Other than Ms. Visser's were referred to the RCMP uh, before this year. So there were three this year, Ms. Visser in a previous fiscal year. How many others in addition to that? A number. No other case. So the first file referred to the RCMP for fraudulent overbilling was the case of Claire Hélène Visser. And after that, subsequently, we referred three further cases to the RCMP in 2023-24. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse. MP contacted PSPC regarding criminal investigations into c consultants that were not referred to them by you. So investigations that they initiated on their own or were initiated by complaints from, from other, uh, other sources. Thank you. To my knowledge, the RCMP has not contacted us in regard to the files you mentioned in your question. How much money is suspected by your department as being uh, given out to fraudsters uh, or um, having been the subject of fraud? So you say there's three other cases. What's the total value of, uh, of the suspected fraud? Thank you for the question. It would be very difficult for me to estimate a total sum in regard to this fraud because the very nature of fraud is to resist detection, to be secretive. Therefore, without looking through the cases one by one, it would be very difficult. I know there are international organizations who say that fraud might represent between 0.5 to 5% of spending in certain government entities, but it would be entirely speculation on my part to try to give you an exact sum. Which departments uh, 
which departments are affected by the cases that have been referred to the RCMP? Thank you for the question. First of all, I would say that no department is entirely safe from this type of fraud. I think 36 departments. Fix. Sorry, uh, Chair. Mm. Okay, I'm looking for the specifics of, uh, of those departments. Like so that you say there's 36. Can you provide the list of, of the 36 to the committee? And um, the minister said that the cases were totaled around $5 million. Is that, mm -hmm. is that the right number? Oui, c'est un estimé approximatif qui okay. est très juste. Yes, that is an approximate estimate. It's $5 million. I'm sure that there's, uh, I'm sure that there's information to support that. Can you provide that, ri that in writing to the committee, um, the estimate that's been compiled? I mean, initially you said it would be difficult. Uh, the minister found it less difficult. Um, those, that information was gathered for him by you and your colleagues. So um, I, I'd like to get specifics on that. It's about $5 million. You say it's across 36 departments. So I'd like a list of the departments and the estimates that, that correlate to each department. Department. Are you able to do that for us, please? We will consult our files to see what we can do, and we will commit to send on the information as much as possible. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Just a reminder, I'm sure you're aware that this committee has passed a motion. We require any requested uh, responses within a three-week period. Mr. Jouari, please. The floor is yours for six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good to be back. And I'd like to move that we resume debate on Mr. Green's motion regarding summer meetings. And um, I'd like to go on the list for speaking. Uh, thanks for your patience, everyone. Normally, we'd go right to a vote on this. However, uh, in consultation, I'm ruling such out of order because we already are in the summer. So there's actually, it's an invalid motion now because we already are in summer. So a motion and goes to vote. I'd like to challenge the check. Challenge, challenging the chair on my ruling it out of order. Now we can go to a vote. <laughs> so shall the decision of the chair be sustained? If you vote yes, you vote with the chair. If you vote no, you vote against the chair. Um, go ahead, sir. Mr. Jawari. Against. Mr. Kuzmirchuk. No. Mr. Longfield. No. Mr. McDonald. Mr. McDonald? Yes, Ken. <laughs> Against. There we go. Mr. Souza? No. Uh, Mr. Barrett? Yes. Ms. Block? Yes. Mr. Brock? We. Oui. Madame Vignola? We. Oui. Mr. Julian? It was a crazy ruling against. Oh, the worker bees are back. <laughs> Four yeas, six nays. It was crazy. It was wacko. I take great offense, Mr. Julian, at uh, my uh, interpretation of that, but thanks. I am overruled, so we now will vote on resuming uh, Mr. Green's uh, motion. Mr. Jawari? Yes. Mr. Kuzmirchuk? Yes. Mr. Longfield? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. M Mr. Souza? I'm going to suspend for a couple seconds here, but can we get a call? Yes. Mr. Barrett? No. Mr. M Ms. Block? No. Ms. Bro Mr. Brock? An enthusiastic no. Madame Vignola? No. Mr. Julian? Uh, yes. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Six yeas, four nays. Okay. Thanks. Uh, before we resume, I'm actually going to suspend for about a minute so we can get everyone, or I can send out a copy of that motion to everyone so they do have it. So just bear with us for a minute. In the meantime, though, um, I had a speaking list. I said Mr. Jawari. I saw Mr. Souza. Was there anyone else from the Zoom area? Oh. Right, we're going to suspend for about a minute so I can 
have the clerks find that motion and send it out to everyone. Everyone, uh, our clerk has sent out in both official languages the motion, so everyone should have it. So go ahead, Mr. Jory, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I wanted to open up by saying that we came here prepared. We came here prepared to, to discuss the um, outsourcing of contracts. It's been something that was uh, actually put on the list back on February of 22nd, 2022, and it hasn't gone anywhere. And it's good that, you know, we're, we're actually getting back to some business uh, for OGO. Um, it, it is a relevant topic. This is something that uh, uh, both departments and all the departments has been actively working on, and there are a lot of good stories as far as what the government is doing and uh, what the departments have been successful in doing. And the, the opening remark uh, talked about, uh, the opening remark by Mr. Mills talked about the, uh, all the initiatives that the government has done uh, to ensure and that not only they review, but they also put new policies in there. So we are ready. We are ready to have that conversation, yet we see our colleagues open up by um, wanting to do a deep dive on a um, case that's in front of our CMP, and they're trying to um, prosecute this case as uh, it was already publicized on, on the social media even before this meeting. So um, on that note, we would like to um, actually say, if it was about this, we would have, uh, we would have, uh, we would have, we would have engaged. But now that we are going down the path of uh, um, kind of playing the partisan game, no, we are, we are going to uh, take the, the 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 approach of uh, no meeting uh, unless it is emergency. Uh, and for, for the summer, and this is a path that's available to us, and this is the path that we are choosing to do. Had we not gone that down that road and not taken that approach, and you know, as you could see, um, we provided the list of all the speakers. We are all ready. We are ready to engage on that. We, we would have engaged, but not now. On that note, um, that's I yield the floor back to you, Chair, and that's, those are the points I wanted to make. So we are ready. We are ready to engage, but not on partisan, not during the summer, not for non-emergency about the case that's in front of the RCMP. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I support this motion, and I think some others do as well, and I say we move to vote. Thank you. I have Mr. Barrett, then Mr. Brock, and then Mr. Julian. Mr. Barrett, go ahead, sir. I'm not surprised, of course, Chair, <clears throat> that Liberal members of the committee uh, want to uh, try to cover up the uh, corruption and failures and fraud that has run rampant after nine years of, of their government. Um, here we have uh, departmental officials in front of us. We have matters that um, have been referred to the RCMP. But like so many cases, when we are so many um, so many examples that we have uh, with respect to procurement, um, what uh, liberal members want is commercials about how well everything is going, and they don't want any accountability. We heard that about the uh, about the arrive scam app. It was supposed to. It was supposed to cost eighty thousand dollars. It cost many orders of magnitude more than that, and they tried to thwart. They tried to shut down investigations at absolutely every single turn. We've, of course, I don't support. The, I don't support uh, the motion in its form. Um, I have more questions for officials. So if this is going to get shut down, I will speak again, Chair, to to. Um, at least advise the officials of what my questions are for them. Give them the opportunity to, to get back to us with, with some of those answers because uh, Canadians deserve the accountability. When I talk to them, when I hear from them, they're demanding accountability and, and that's, that's the function that we're providing for them. So, um, so I'm interested to hear uh, uh, interested to hear what what some of my colleagues have to say about this. But uh, if if this meeting is not going to go forward with questioning officials, um, I'll have more questions uh, to pose uh, to the officials, even if the Liberals are going to block the uh, block the bureaucrats from answering them. Mr. Brock, you're up next. Thank you, Chair. I have I have much to say, but I want to start 
by offering my sincerest apologies to Mr. Laporte, Mr. Mills, Mr. Albert, and Madame Poulin for this shameless display of a cover-up between the Liberal government and the NDP coalition partners. Because we're all here to do a job. You all have jobs to do when you get back to your respective offices. We are taking you away from your respective offices and the good work that you do day in and day out. And it's no different with politicians. As parliamentarians, we're parliamentarians all year long. We're not parliamentarians when the House is sitting. We don't take a three to four month break and not worry about our responsibilities uh, to the government, sorry, to Canada, to address ongoing issues that are a prevalent concern in Canada. And that is the issue with respect to the fraudulent billing and the broken procurement system that we have in this country that has allowed fraudsters and grifters to take advantage of a broken system that didn't provide the appropriate oversight. And the Liberal government and the members of this Liberal, on this Liberal committee, with their NDP partners, don't want to get to the truth. When I say we're parliamentarians for the entire year, that's exactly it. As Michael Barrett articulated, my colleague, members of my community in Brantford, Brant, my constituency, know that I have to work year round. I have to work from time to time in Ottawa and for extended periods of time in Ottawa in addition to my responsibilities to my community. In essence, parliamentarians can walk and chew gum at the same time. And as my colleague indicated, 90% of the Liberal members of this committee and the NDP member are not here physically in Ottawa. They're taking advantage of what Parliament has allowed in terms of a hybrid format to do just that, walk and chew gum at the same time. We all remember the famous slogan that Justin Trudeau used in 2015, sunny ways, Canadians, sunny ways. He even then wrote an open letter to Canadians, and I'm going to read various passage of, uh, of that letter. It was dated November the 4th, 2015. Starts off, my dear friends. Point of order, Mr. Chair. And there's a point Excuse of order. Me, Mr. Brock. Yes, Mr. Jouari. First of all, I want to thank you for the latitude that you've shown on, um, on the spectrum of the conversation that we are having and uh, also Thanks to my colleagues for their patience, but I'm not sure. And, and Canadian now can see exactly why we call it this meeting a politicization than anything else. Or what's, what's uh, the having point said of order, that, please, sir? I'm looking okay, for sorry. relevance of um, referring to by elections and referring to, um, you know, it's all about to, to the fact that the motion okay. that we are debating. Thanks. So, what, what's the relevance? I do find it uh, relevant, but we always do offer very, very wide berth for uh, such debate. And it is the motion put forward allows, because it's not very specific, allows an extremely wide area to debate. Continue, Mr. Brock. So, part way through this open letter to Canadians, the Prime Minister says Our country faces many real and immediate challenges from a struggling middle class to the threat of climate change. If we are to overcome these obstacles, Canadians need to have faith in their government's honesty and willingness to listen. Emphasis mine. That is why we committed 
to set a higher bar for openness and transparency in Ottawa. Government and its, and its information must be open by default. Simply put, it is time to shine more light on government to make sure it remains focused on the people it was created to serve, you. But in order for you to trust your government, you need a government that will trust you. When we make a mistake, as all governments do, it is important that we acknowledge that mistake and learn from it. We know that you do not expect us to be perfect, but you expect us to work tirelessly and to be honest, open, and sincere in our efforts to serve the public interest. Before the election, we also made a commitment to bring new leadership and a new tone to Ottawa. Moving forward, we will pursue, pursue our goals and objectives with a renewed sense of collaboration. We fully understand and appreciate that partnerships with provincial, territorial, and municipal governments are vital to deliver the real positive change that we promised you. To close, I am deeply grateful to have this opportunity to serve you and every Canadian across our great country. I am committed to leading an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians. Repeat, accountable to Canadians. Lives up to the highest ethical standards. Brings our country together and applies the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. Thank you for having faith in me. Thank you for putting your trust in our team. We will not let you down. What an absolute joke. An absolute lie. We're talking about fraud in this committee. In my respectful opinion, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau committed the biggest fraud on this country and Canadians. Everything that I read out in the record, he has done the complete opposite. So in addition to that, Mr. I would be asking Mr. Brock, you... I yes. apologize. It's one o'clock. We are out of resources. We're only booked to one, so I am adjourning at this time. Sorry.